I'm a retired senior special agent from NASA OIG and uh, used to do the criminal cases for NASA. And in uh, 1998, um, I came up with the idea of uh, creating an undercover sting operation known as Operation Lunar Eclipse. And our purpose wasn't to go out and find real moon rocks, but find con artists selling phony ones. And for the first time in history during that uh, undercover sting operation, we had an individual approach us with a real moon rock for sale. It was 1.142 grams uh, encased in a lucite ball and a 10-inch by 14-inch plaque, and he was selling it to me for $5 million. And so it took us two months to convince him to uh, uh, actually show us the, uh, the display in the moon rock, and when we did, when he did, we seized it. Are there any circumstances in which it's actually legal to sell moon rock? Well, let's remember that there are three sources of moon rocks on the Earth. The Americans brought back moon rocks on six-man missions, Apollo 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17. The Soviets had three unmanned robotic missions that brought back moon rocks, uh, Luna 16, 20, and 24. And, of course, meteorites are the third source of moon rocks on the Earth. In fact, I have some in my office. The uh, meteorites may or may not be legally uh, uh, obtained. If they're from uh, a national park in the United States, for example, uh, uh, they belong to the U.S. government. If they're from Antarctica or some nations around the world, they belong to the government or to uh, the people of the world. Uh, but... Um, that traditionally is the legitimate source of lunar material. There is one sale that occurred back in 1993. These Russians sold uh, 0.2 grams of lunar material at the uh, um, at auction, mm -hmm. and it collected 400. It was sold for 442,500 dollars, and that was how from do, the Luna 16 mission. Yeah, how how does so much rock actually go missing? I mean, don't, don't scientists treasure this stuff? Well, they do. Uh, the, the problem is, for example, with NASA, you basically have two hats at NASA. You have the security hat and you have the educator hat, you know, the, the idea of sharing information and knowledge and so forth. And very often they're at odds with one another. Uh, the, the, the scientists, the educators, want to put the moon rocks in the hands of as many people as possible so they can look at them and study them. The law enforcement, the security side, wants to protect them. And if you ever were to go to uh, Johnson Space Center, you'd see that there's an elaborate system to protect moon rocks there. Uh, we only brought back 842 pounds of moon rocks, and so most of the moon rocks are stored at Johnson Space Center. What is going to shortly come out is that uh, there's also a storage of moon rocks at White Sands, which is under the control of NASA, and that's in New Mexico. But beyond that, uh, President Nixon gave away 270 uh, moon rocks, to the nations of the world, 135 Apollo 11 and 135 Apollo 17. That became the property of the recipient countries, not for personal ownership, but for the people of those countries.